Rise Band for fighthype.com. I've got my man, Chris Hubert Jr. Uh, what's happening, Chris? Feeling good, man. Feeling strong, feeling ready. It's, uh, it's my time, baby. You were like quite confident, quite, you know, you, it felt like you wanted to bring Renault out of his shell. He was kind of keep, keeping himself to himself, not giving a lot away. Do you think that's his natural personality or was he just focused on? I don't know the guy, so I couldn't tell you, but uh, this is this is ITV box office. We've got, we've got to bring a little bit of spice to it. You can't just, you know, oh, nice to meet you, mate. I've, you know, I'll see you in the ring on, on, on February 4th. It's, it's not, it's not going to cut it. And, um, and he didn't, he, at first he didn't have a lot to say for himself, so I had to G him up a little bit. <laughs> Chris, I just want to go back uh, a number of weeks now. I want to go back to uh, a stage where when you announced the fight for the IBO title uh, against Renault Quillen, there was a lot of negative criticism that was coming on social media about the IBO is illegitimate, um, they don't recognise it, etc, etc. What were your thoughts on that and how was your reaction towards that? Listen, I, I, could, go, I could go online now and say, um, I'm going to give a million pounds away to charity and people will be like, ah, oh, that charity's crap. You know, you're, you know, it doesn't, every, anything I do, is, you're always going to get people that, um, you know, that, that, that throw, that try and throw dirt on it. At the end of the day, the IBO has been held by the, some of the best fighters um, in boxing. Mayweather, Pacquiao, uh, Lennox Lewis, Klitschko, Golovkin is, is the current IBO middleweight world champion. So you can't you can't say anything. You know this is this is the first step um, in, in, a, in a long in a long and a fruitful career for me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm coming in there to win this world title and then to go and challenge for all the other world titles. So it's, it's a big moment for me. You fought most of your fights at 160 at the middleweight division. You're going up to 168. What would it mean, let's say you win the fight, you stay at 168, you move back to 160. What are the thoughts on, on the on, on Eubank at the moment for that? With boxing, you can't plan. Mm. Um, I mean, you can have a rough idea of what you want to do, but at the end of the day, you can't, you can't have, there's no solid track. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say once I win this IBO Super Mate world, world title, I'm going to just stay at super middleweight because obviously I've got some serious business to take care of in the middleweight division also um, but what putting myself in that position IBO super middleweight world champion enables me to then challenge the other middleweight uh, the other super middleweight world champions and it puts me in a position to to fight middleweight as well you know there's there's so many options for me so I guess it's whichever one comes first. You can't plan and say, I want to fight him next because he might get an injury or he might say no. Um, so after I've, after I've done, done what I need to do on February 4th, then we, then we pick the best option. In terms of weight from 160 to 160, is it quite easy for you? I mean, all it is is me not having to cut weight. I walk around 12 2, 12 3. Um, so there's no cut for me yeah. to fight at super middleweight. Whereas at middleweight, I have to I have to cut, mm -hmm. and that can be tough for me because look at how I'm built. There's there's nothing for me to cut, so I'm I'm, I'm just starving myself, and you know, de uh, you know, no water, and you know, it, it is tough. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm fighting smaller guys at middleweight, mm -hmm. so you know, there's pros and cons. But um, as far as as far as fighting a super middleweight, I don't have to bulk up. I'm not having to eat loads more and all that. It's, I'm naturally, I'm naturally there. I know you've been saying that the fight you wanted was Glocking. You didn't work out last year. The path is Glocking. You, you mentioned Andre Ward as well, but domestically, there's actually quite a, quite a few big fights out there. The 160, I know that that rematch with Billy Joe, but even the 168 with James Miguel, George Groves, Cannon, etc. So potentially some huge domestic fights uh, for you in the future as well. It's more than potential. That they're, they're there, mm. and once I win this world title. Uh, I'm coming for those guys. There's, there's no two ways about it. All of them. The last couple of fights have been on Sky Sports. You now moved to Terrestrial TV. Looking forward to fighting on a potentially a huge audience. It is. You know, this is. You can't get a bigger platform than ITV. You know, everyone who has a TV in Britain has ITV, which you can't say for any of these other stations, uh, any of these other TV channels. Um, so the potential reach is massive, and, um, and it's, not only is it great for me, it's great for British boxing. 
There's great British talent out there at the moment and, and we deserve the best and most exposure we can get. Um, and that's what you get with, with a terrestrial TV station uh, such as ITV um, exposing you to the non-boxing public, you know, the little kids, the old, the elderly, um, people who know nothing about the sport of boxing get to see, get an insight, get to watch and uh, experience boxing for the first time, so it's, it's huge. Also announced this week was um, previous or former undisputed champion Dennis Lewis and current multi-weight world champion Andre Ward are going to both be the next week commentating. Yeah. Quite two big names in the sport going to be commenting on your this fight is, uh, next week. This is a, it's a massive event. It's going to be a, an awesome amount of boxing. We've got a great undercard. Um, and all of this for, for 10 quid. You can't argue with it.